What's up everybody out there watching this? Justin here to do my TNA. Let me turn this TV sound off. Anyways, my TNA Bound for Glory 2016 pay-per-view review. See the Cowboys won. 24-17. Anyways, Pittsburgh is killing Kansas City. Killing them. Like 36 to 7, I believe. I just turned off Sunday Night Football. Got the NFL Network on. Anyways, Dallas is 3 and 1. Good for them. They finally got themselves a quarterback that uh, doesn't injure himself or get injured. So, good for the Dallas Cowboys. I'm not a fan of them, but I don't hate them. All the Dallas Cowboy fans out there, I'm sure you are happy you have a quarterback that is healthy and younger and probably a better athlete and can run better and run faster. Anyways, enough about football. Uh, this Sunday was pretty damn boring. Not the pay-per-view. I'm talking about football. My Packers didn't play. The games I watched were not that entertaining except for one of them the Raiders and Ravens that was damn entertaining at the end and Colts and Jaguars in the end was pretty good Bills and Patriots I watched a lot of that game oh and I wish I didn't I want my two uh, two and a half hours back that I watched because that game was boring I thought Patriots might put up a fight but they got shut out. Back to Bound for Glory 2016 review. Up first was the X Division Championship. It was on the line. It was announced earlier during the week when I did my predictions. I said DJZ the champion had an opponent to be announced. His opponent was Trevor Lee. Trevor Lee, former... X Division champion, good talent, pretty damn good talent, is Trevor Lee. DJZ wins and retains the title. Pretty good match to kick off the pay per view. Pretty fast paced, a lot of action in it. You had Trevor Lee hit a double stomp. That was pretty awesome. You had DJZ hit a lot of moves in a row, and then he hit a DDT 1 2 3. DJZ wins and retains the X Division championship. DJZ still X Division champion. Up next we had the 10 man Bound for Glory Bound for Gold Bound for Glory match. 10 man gauntlet. I thought Cody Cody Rhodes might be in this. He wasn't. TNA can't call him Rhodes. Well I can and I will. His name's Cody Rhodes. We all know that. WWE, you are pathetic for not letting them use the last name Rhodes. Because you didn't create the name Rhodes. His father is Dusty Rhodes. I believe Rhodes wasn't his real last name. I believe it's Reynolds. Dustin Reynolds. Or, or not Dustin. Virgil Reynolds. Or D Dusty Reynolds. But still. You didn't create the Rhodes name. You're pathetic, and that's a disgrace that you wouldn't let Cody take the last name Rhodes to the Indies and TNA or Ring of Honor. I don't know what they're going to call Cody in Ring of Honor because he's going there very soon. He will be on Ring of Honor's next pay-per-view final battle, which I will do a predictions for and a review for final battle. So... Trevor Lee, DJZ put on a good match. On to the 10-man gauntlet. The guys that were in it. Robbie E. Dax. Byron Dax. Uh, what was the other guy's name? Byron Sex. Or Byron Sutter. I believe the guy's name was. Or something like that. A lot of great talent. Eli Drake in it. Tigris making his return in it. Rockstar Spud, Jesse Goddard. Anyways, uh, up first was Spud. Spud and Jesse Goddard started the gauntlet for the gold. 
or gauntlet for the bound for gold. That's what it was called. Spud Jesse start, then out comes uh, Baraka, or Byron, or whatever the guy's name is. I don't remember. Or By Saxton. Byron Sutter. I think that's his name. I forget what his name is. Then uh, after him comes Robbie E. Eli Drake. And then comes Robbie E. Then comes Grado. <laughs> Grado lasted. I, th I hope I'm saying his name right. Not that I care for the guy. I'm not a fan of his. I think it's Grado, not Gato. Or I think it's Grado. Grado comes in the gauntlet. He gets thrown out in about three seconds. He gets tossed over the top rope like a salad. That was funny as hell, and that was hilarious. Seeing uh, Grado come in and get tossed out, that was hilarious. That was funny as hell. I'm glad he didn't stay in for more than a minute because the guy sucks and is boring in my opinion. I guess Grado was a super over in the UK and indie companies I don't care TNA is in, in the UK I mean yes they're on TV but they're not a UK promotion so I don't care for Grado I care for a lot of other European talent like Cesaro even Sheamus is better than Grado and I don't like Sheamus so Again, great all eliminated about three seconds. It was funny as hell and epic. Mahami Sheeran's in it. He's uh, one of the final four. The final four were Mahami Sheeran, Tigris, Eli Drake, and Jesse Goddard. I thought they were going to give it to Jesse Goddard, but no. He got eliminated. Everybody got eliminated. Eli Drake wins it. Eli Drake Dummy, yeah. You are a dummy if you didn't know. Eli Drake wins. So I guess he'll be getting a future world title shot. So good for Eli Drake. He's pretty entertaining. He's a good talker. Good enough wrestler. Good for Eli Drake for winning the Bound for Gold match. Up next we had the third match of the night was the Miracle Mike Bennett. Taking on Moose in his TNA pay-per-view debut. Moose. 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 I love when he does that during his entrance. That's great. Moose had a pretty cool, fun entrance. Football team, high school football team was on the entire stage. Standing. Dressed in their gear. Dressed in their pads and their helmets. It was pretty cool. Great entrance. For Moose's TNA pay-per-view debut. Uh, I don't know if Impact Wrestling. I, I'm not even sure if they still call themselves TNA at all. But I'm still going to call them TNA sometimes. So Moose had a great entrance. And it was a pretty good match. I enjoyed this match a lot. Miracle Moose worked very well together. They had a good match. It wasn't great. But it was good. I enjoyed it. So Moose wins. He had to win. I predicted Moose would win. First match, I predicted DJZ would retain. He retained. Ten man gauntlet. I was wrong about that. And the third match, Moose wins. So I was right about that. So, so far, I am two and one. And I'm going to write that down because I want to know my record. The fourth match of the night was, um, I know I wrote it down here, after Moose and Miracle, which I said they had a good match, and if you didn't think it was good or entertaining, well, you're an idiot. Up next was the Grand Finals, the Grand Championship Finals. Aaron Rex, A.K. Damian Sandow. He can't use the name Damian Sandow. We all know that, and I'm gonna still say his name. Aaron Rex is A.K. Damian Sandow. If WWE wants to sue me, go right ahead for saying Cody Rhodes and Damian Sandow. Maybe I'll get sued by the Evil Empire. I doubt it. Anyways, I don't think they could sue anybody for just saying. 
a wrestler's name that they own. So, Aaron Rex, Eddie Edwards in the Grand Championship Finals. This is a three rounds. It's These matches, the Grand Championship matches, are rounds. They're three rounds each. And then, if it goes the, di the rounds go the distance and nobody wins, then judges vote on each round. And the judges make the decision. So, Aaron Rex, Eddie Edwards pretty damn good match very good wrestling I really enjoyed it round number one went to Eddie Edwards wins round number one the judges give it to Eddie Edwards round number two uh, uh, I'm not really sure I think uh, Aaron Rex won round number two I will, will not really sure round number three Went to, in my opinion, went to Damien Sandow. Even though Eddie Edwards had a lot of good offense. And again, it was a lot of great wrestling. Some submissions were used. It was damn good stuff in the Grand Championship Finals. It was a good worked match. Very good work to both guys. Worked very hard and gave it their all. To put on a good match. Final decision. The judges give it, one judge gave it to Eddie Edwards. The other two rounds were given to Aaron Rex. Aaron Rex wins and is a new TNA, the first ever TNA Grand Championship champion. Not the Grand Championship, but Aaron Rex is the first ever Grand Champion in TNA. Thank God they got rid of that stupid King of the Mountain Championship. Thank God there's a new championship. It's a grand championship. Every match is going to have three rounds. And judges will be at ringside. So, Aaron Rex is the first ever grand champion. Congratulations to him. Eddie Edwards. You put on a hell of a performance. Also, Aaron Rex, you put on a damn good performance also. So, it's Aaron Rex's debut on TNA pay-per-view. So, I thought he had to win it. Just like Moose had to win because it was his pay-per-view debut. And they paid Moose a lot of money. They paid him a lot of money to come to TNA. So why not put him over on pay-per-view? So my predictions now. I am 3-1. and one Because I had Aaron Rex. No, I didn't. I admit I had Eddie Edwards. Or I did have Drew Galloway defeating Aaron Rex. But Drew Galloway is... Supposedly injured, could not compete at Bound for Glory. That was pretty disappointing to hear, but injuries happen all the time to wrestlers. Wrestling in 2016 is pretty damn dangerous. You have a ton of, in, a lot of injuries happening. I mean, the past five years, you have a too, too many, way too many injuries to wrestlers have been happening within the last five years. I'm talking about a WWE. And some in TNA, even a, a few in Ring of Honor, have happened to guys. I mean, the business has really changed in 2016 and 2010. Guys and matches, are, they're doing really high risk, crazy spots, crazy high flying, high spots that they shouldn't be doing. But... You can't go back to the 1980s, the late 80s, early 90s. You cannot go back to that style. You just could not. The fans would get bored to death. I would. I will admit I would get bored to death. Not bored to death. I wouldn't get bored if uh, it was a slow pace match. I wouldn't get that bored because I'm a fan of that. I'm a fan of the late 80s type wrestling. And even early 90s. All I'm trying to say is guys like in the late 80s, early 90s, guys really never got injured and were never out for a whole year or longer like a lot of guys have been out. I'm talking about guys that have been out a long time like Randy Orton. He's been injured many times. John Cena injured many times. And Cena's injuries were kind of, some were just an accident, like you know, when he tore his shoulder or to tore the shoulder off the bone. That was from a RKO on a table, I believe. And 
I mean, Orton, Cena, a lot of guys have been out and injured. Rollins got injured. I mean, Rollins, in my opinion, that guy was running really hard on the road for well over, for years and years and years. And then he was champion. He was trying to carry the company, and then he injured his knee, sadly, because the guy's probably overworked. But you, uh, you got to be overworked if you want to be WWE champion. you got to carry the ball and run with it hard and hope and pray you don't get injured. Anyways, there's been so many injuries, in my opinion, since 2010 in wrestling. It's ridiculous how many guys have gotten serious injuries and had to be out six months or a year. So let's go back to the late 80s and early 90s. I'm talking about guys like Hawk Hogan. And you could say he barely did anything in the ring. He wouldn't even take bumps. Well, that's true. He didn't have to barely do anything because he was over anyways. What It didn't matter what he did. He didn't have to do any high spots then. But Hogan was champion four years. And the guy never got injured. And he was on the road non-stop. Ric Flair. In the 80s and 90s, Ric Flair barely ever got injured. The guy was never injured until like 1997. Late 96 when he tore his rotator cuff. Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels in the 80s and 90s, they were never injured. Never. Ever. They like weren't injured for... Well, Shawn Michaels got injured a couple times. And had to get knee surgery and had a severe back injury in 98. But still, from 1990 to 98, 97, Shawn Michaels like never got injured and was never off TV. Bret Hart was never off TV, never injured until 99 when he got injured at Starrcade 99 from Goldberg. Undertaker, but like... Barely ever injured. I know he had a broken bone in his foot at Hell in a Cell 98, at King of the Ring 98. I didn't know that, but he did have a broken bone in his foot. He still worked through it. My God, Mick Foley, the most insane risk taker in the history of the business. And Mick Foley had probably more injuries than any wrestler on this planet. But the guy didn't take any time off at all he didn't take barely any time off he kept working through injuries over and over and over until 1999 and then Mick Foley did have to take time off because he needed knee surgery and his knees were really bad and his knees were really hurting him my point is in 2016 wrestling is uh I don't know, the crazy moves they do to each other, the new moves they do to each other. I don't know. A lot of guys are not as dependable and injury prone. I mean, barely any guys got injured. In the late 80s, early 90s, hardly any guys were injury prone. That's all I'm trying to say. Sorry about that rant going off topic. Back to Bomb for Glory in my review. So, after Aaron Rex becomes champion, damn good match. Up next, we had the fifth match of the night, which was the great war for the TNA Tag Team titles. Decay defending with Rosemary against Broken Matt, Brother Nero with Rebecca Hardy. Matt Hardy and Jeff, they had a pretty cool entrance. Matt's wife, Rebby, I believe was playing that piano. It looked like she's playing it for real. I mean, it looked like she's hitting the keys to me. I, I don't know if she could play it that good, but it's possible she was playing it, and I think she was. So, Rebecca Hardy, Rebby Sky, whatever you want to call her. I believe her name's Rebecca. She played the piano. Pretty cool entrance. Decay... Awesome. I love Decay. I love Rosemary with Decay. I love all three characters. I love the group. It's innovative. It's different. It's awesome. They got Marilyn Manson playing their theme. That's cool. That really fits well with their group, Decay. 
So the Great War starts, and I got a lot of notes on this. It was insane. It was a pretty insane brawl. Oh, and back to back to uh, Aaron Rex, Eddie Edwards. During their match, I believe it was in the second round, the lights went out. I'm not joking. The lights went out in the impact zone. Maybe Dixie forgot to pay the electric bill. I don't know what happened. It was sad that it happened, and it was kind of embarrassing, but what the hell can you really do? I mean, if a generator decided to explode and go out, you can't control when a generator is going to blow up or go out. I mean, generators have gone out before during pay-per-views. ECW barely legal. Their first pay-per-view from the tiny ECW arena. Their generator went out. And it blew up right after the pay-per-view went off the air. So thank God they got the finish in before the generator blew out. In your house. Uh... In your house in May 96. I think it's called Beware of Dog. In your house. Uh, they had a severe thunderstorm. And the pay-per-view. I believe it. A lightning struck. And the generator. And the storm knocked. The In Your House pay-per-view off the air. And nobody could see the rest. Until then they did redid In Your House. And called it In Your House Beware of Dog 2. So, I don't know, maybe there's a severe thunderstorm in Orlando at the impact zone. Maybe that knocked the lights out. Or their generator just decided to go out. It's not TNA's fault. I doubt it was the... It wasn't a production team's fault. Can't blame it on anybody. In TNA, the lights just decided to go out. On the ring. The ring lights went out, but... They had a spotlight on the ring. At least you could see the two guys in the ring wrestling still. At least it wasn't pitch dark. And then they came back on for round number three. The lights were back on already. And some stupid fans. Some really just ignorant, idiotic, retarded, douchebag, dumbass fans. I could use more words to describe what they chanted, but I won't. These idiots and jerks and jerk-offs decided to chant. They started chanting, pay the light bill, pay the light bill, pay the light bill. Aha, that was so funny. I didn't laugh. I thought it was pathetic. You fans that chanted that, that's what I think of you. You're stupid. Pay the light bill. Oh, that was so funny, that chant. That was so funny, I forgot to laugh. And I didn't laugh at all. So it wasn't funny at all. And I made one tweet. I made a joke about it in a GIF on Twitter. I put a GIF with a tweet about it. But it, I was a joke. It was a joke. It wasn't like, oh, pay your light bill, TNA. I didn't tweet that. And if somebody did, you're stupid. If you tweet to TNA, pay your light bill, you're an idiot. And the fans that chanted that, you're idiots. So, back to uh, before Decay against the Hardys in the Great War. Before that, we had Gail Kim, I believe, get put in the TNA Hall of Fame. And they had a little ceremony. First out came a returning Christy Hemi to return for, I'm sure, one night only. I doubt she, she could sign a contract. Maybe she'll ring an ounce again. I don't know. But Christy Emmy returned. She was in TNA a long time with Gail Kim. So it was nice to see Christy Hemi back. Some of the fans gave her a welcome back chant. That was nice to see her. And that was respectful. Uh, Christy was never a good wrestler. She shouldn't have ever been a wrestler. But she was a good ring announcer. Then returning to TNA. Taryn Terrell. And she was pregnant. I was pretty surprised she was pregnant. But she came out pregnant. Of course she retired from wrestling. Good for her. She didn't want to be in wrestling anymore. I believe 
she's super religious. I don't know if that's why she wanted to leave wrestling. I have no clue. And I really don't care. That's her business if she wants to be super religious. So Taryn Terrell comes back. Then out comes a returning awesome Kong. She's not going to be part of the knockouts division. I doubt it. She just was returning to say thank you and to be there for Gail Kim. So then, it was great to see Awesome Kong. And that was pretty surprising when I heard her music hit. I was pretty happy. That was an awesome moment. Awesome Kong and Gail Kim had epic, legendary matches in TNA. Uh, Taryn Terrell and Gail Kim had pretty epic and pretty good matches also in TNA. They had a... I believe last woman standing match at a Slammiversary. That was damn good. They had a ladder match on a Impact on Spike. That was damn good. So Taryn and Gal had a great feud in TNA. But Taryn, not Taryn, Gal Kim and Awesome Kong, their feud will always be remembered as what made the Knockouts division pretty damn great. And Awesome Kong was the second ever Knockouts Champion. Gal Kim was the first. At Bound for Glory 07. Gal Kim became the first Knockouts Champion. So Gal Kim then. After Awesome Kong. Out comes Dixie Carter. And. It was. Uh, it, I'm not going to say it wasn't good to see Dixie. Because she has been in TNA. She's probably supported the knockouts a lot when they first started. She's been there for Gail's entire career. So Dixie's still part of the company. I don't know. I have no clue who put money down to put on Bound for Glory and the Impact tapings. I don't know who put money down. It's a mystery. I'll talk about that later after I talk about Lashley and EC3. I'll talk about who I think... Might have put money down. Or bought into TNA. Or maybe they bought in. Uh, and they own the entire company now. Maybe they paid Dixie off. Who knows. And maybe this was Dixie's last appearance. On TV. I don't know. Or in the company. So. Then Dixie says watch this video. Tribute video to Gal Kim. It was a great video. Al Snow was in it. Talking about Gal Kim. Jade, TNA Knockout Jade was in it, Billy Corgan was in it, all talking about Gail Kim's great legendary career in TNA Impact Wrestling. Then Gail talked and gave a speech and thanked a lot of people. She thanked her trainer in Toronto, Canada that started her. The same guy that trained Trish Stratus and he trained others. He trained Edge and Christian also I believe. I believe his name is Rod, or I think Rod, or Rob something. So Gal thanked her trainer. She thanked Fit Finley. She thanked TNA, Dixie Carter. She thanked Trish Stratus, Victoria, Molly Holly, Jazz, Awesome Kong, I think she thanked. And then, uh, of course, Gal didn't thank... Uh, WWE and Vince and why would she her time there was horribly horribly managed when she was there they misused her really badly basically they just paid her a lot of money to do nothing they never pushed her they never did anything with her that meant anything this was way before the uh, women's wrestling revolution started in NXT. This was way before that. It was a, it was a joke. It was pathetic how they treated Gail Kim when she was in WWE, and I don't blame her for eliminating herself from a battle royal live on Raw. And right after that, she left the company. That's probably the best way ever. That somebody's left WWE live on Raw. You eliminate yourself from a match and leave. That was funniest. That was epic. Best way ever to leave a company that you're unhappy with. Just walk out. And turn that light off please. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
And then a car went by beeping at their horn at them for a really long time. That's pretty funny. This match was crazy. This was like part three. This was the third sequel to Final Deletion to Delete or Decay. Well, tonight was probably the final chapter. Because it was at the biggest pay-per-view for TNA, Bound for Glory, the biggest show of the year. So it probably was the final chapter. Or whatever you want to call it. The prequel, I believe. That's what they call three movies. Or trifecta, whatever they call them. Anyways, back to the match. And Jeff Hardy gets water dumped on him by Crazy Steve in the back. Backstage. And then Crazy Steve brings a ref over. And then he looks at the ground where Jeff Hardy was, and he looks, and then he goes, where'd he go? <laughs> Jeff Hardy disappeared. That was crazy. And then, of course, Jeff Hardy shows up, dressed up like a pimp. That was weird. And talking in a different, like a Cajun accent. That was weird. And he's saying, oh, they think Jeff Hardy ain't here, boy. I ain't here. I ain't here. And then he's throwing, he starts throwing like, a ton of pumpkins. Start smashing pumpkins. And I'm not talking about Billy Corrigan's group. Pumpkins are smashing on the ground. Pumpkins are being thrown at Crazy Steve in front of him. Smashing on the ground. That is pretty damn funny. And thrown at him. Then Rosemary appears. Rosemary appears after all the pumpkins were thrown. And then uh, they go back to Abyss and Matt. Fighting in Universal Studios, Florida. The amusement park and then rosemary gets a pumpkin put over her face and on top of her head that was pretty funny and then she lifts a pumpkin up spits in jeff hardy's face spit i don't know what she spit in his face mist or was something maybe it's poison i have no clue so then willow appears the la crazy laugh of willow and then he appears it's jeff hardy's alter ego willow appears and then a drone appears, and they're outside now. Rosemary gets outside by Abyss and a uh, broken mat, and then a drone appears in Rosemary's face, I believe knocking her off the back of the truck. And then some fan, a crazy fan, shows up in a truck and starts going like this, You want to fight, Abyss? Saying, you want to fight, boy? You want to fight? Come on, let's go. That was pretty damn funny. I don't know what... If that was the guy's accent, I just put on that voice because that's what he sounded like to me. So then they get Broken Man and Abyss get in the guy's pickup truck and get in the back of his truck and he starts driving and they start fighting in the back of the truck. So I guess this was the King of the Road match, part two, 21 years later. The King of the Road match, part two happened. On TNA Bound for Glory 2016. If you don't know the first King of the Road match. Well it was in 1995. At Uncensored. WCW Uncensored. And it was god awful. It was so bad that. it uh, It's funny now. And it's pretty hilarious. If you watch it on the network. King of the Road match. Between Dustin Rhodes and Black Top Bully. Who was Barry Darso. Well, tonight we had the King of the Road match, number two in my opinion. That was pretty funny. So after that, then we go to the Hardys coming back out with Crazy Steve and Abyss into the arena, back into the impact zone. And the crowd popped when they came out back into the ring, and the crowd was really into... I mean, Matt Hardy's character. The crowd was chanting, delete, delete, delete a lot. That was pretty funny. So Matt Hardy, you can hate his character or love his character. You gotta admit, the guy is super over. And the guy has got himself over with this crazy character of his. So then we, out comes a barbed wire board from under the ring. Old school abyss going back to his roots. Then uh, Broken Matt is a bag full of thumbtacks he dumps them on an entire board and then abyss gets slammed on top of the couple hundred thumbtacks that was pretty insane that had to hurt because abyss became a human pincushion and then we had rosemary 
get involved again. She was on the ring apron, and then Rebby Sky comes up from behind her, grabs her like this, power bombs Rosemary through a table to the floor. That was pretty crazy. That was an awesome spot. And Rosemary took a hell of a bump. I mean, going crashing through that table, that was a pretty, looked pretty uh, vicious. Like she could have got a little bit injured. So then we have the final, the finish of the match. What happened? Uh, Jeff Hardy gets out a giant ladder. Broken Matt gets on the microphone and says, Brother Nero, you can use a ladder again and go up and do it. So then, giant ladder. I'm talking 20 feet. It was at least 20 feet. Jeff Hardy at least 20 feet in the air. 18 feet up, jumps off the ladder, through Crazy Steve, in the ring, through two tables, in the ring, one, two, three. The Hardys, Broken Matt, Brother Nero are the new TNA Tag Team Champions. It was a great war. It was a great war indeed. I really enjoyed it. Anybody that was hating on the great war or hating on the Bound for Glory pay-per-view, well... If you hate TNA so much, you should have never watched it. And if you just wanted to bash Bound for Glory, you just wanted to bash it, you just wanted to make fun of it, you just wanted to put it down and say how much it sucked, that's what I think you. If you uh, are a hater of TNA and you hated Bound for Glory, that's what I think you. Because all the talent on the show busted their ass for the fans of TNA. If you don't respect that, that's why I think of you. So, Hardy's our new tag champs. Up next we had... And the Great War, in my opinion, lived up to the hype. I enjoyed it. So let's see my uh, predictions here. I had... So I went to... Let's see, DJZ. Uh, DJZ. Two for two, I think. So far, or one, two, two for, yeah, two for two, I believe, two for two, Decay lost, I had the Hardys winning the tag title, so now I'm three for two, I should have done this before I started the review, What? but whatever, um, next we had the Knockouts title. Knockouts Championship on the line. Maria with Ali against Gal Kim. Gal Kim starts. Maria first berates Ali on the microphone. Says you are nothing. You're pathetic. Putting her down again and again. And putting it's great heel. Great uh, heel tactics by Maria. Because it's going to just get Ali over more and more. And the crowd's going to just want to see Ali kick. Maria's ass more and more every time she puts her down and says she's so stupid and she's nothing and she's a loser. It's gonna going to just help Allie more and more. So then Maria says, I got some bad news. I can't wrestle tonight. My hand and my broken wrist, broken hand is not... Doctor said I couldn't compete. And then Allie says, no, I talked to your doctor and he said you can wrestle tonight. Then Gal Kim comes out, chases her around the ring. That is pretty funny. And Gal Kim wins after and Maria during this took some pretty good back bumps. Gal was running into her full force, knocking her down. And what I saw was Maria's not a great wrestler, not a great worker, but what I saw, Maria took some damn good, they looked great, some damn good back bumps. Maria loses when Gal Kim hits her finisher, eat, defeat, one, two, three, Gal Kim, record setting, I believe, six time knockout champion. Congratulations, Gal Kim. It is awesome that you were in the Hall of Fame, that you went in the Hall of Fame. You deserved it. You've been in TNA since 2005, on and off. Now you're a record-setting knockouts champion. That is awesome. Hopefully we get better matches now in the knockouts division. Hopefully we get a Gal Kim-Jade feud. 
because those matches could be great and maybe other matches with Gal Kim and maybe some new knockouts for the division. So, again, Gal Kim is a new knockouts champion defeating Maria. Then the Miracle shows up and he is pissed. He says he is shutting down, he is shutting down Bond for Glory. Out comes Cody Rhodes. Out comes Cody Rhodes and his wife, Brandy Rhodes. She comes out and they're facing off with the Miracle and Maria in the middle of the ring. And it's pretty damn awesome. Great to see Cody on a pay-per-view again. Great to see Cody get a chance in TNA. Hopefully he can do some great things. But what I read is Cody won't be staying around that long. Cody is only going to be on tapings until the end of the year. And then he's going to be gone from TNA for a while. Because he has other companies he's going to work for like Ring of Honor and I believe in Japan. So Cody might not be back until the spring of 2017 is my guess in TNA. Or maybe in January. I don't know. But Cody's... Cody's probably only going to be on TV for the next two months and then that you're not going to use him anymore. So it's a short term, short term deal, in my opinion, only two or three months. Or not even, just for Bond for Glory and the Impact tapings and then Cody will be on TV until the end of the year because TNA tapes their shows in advance. Great see Cody and Brandy Rhodes attack the Miracle and Maria. That was damn good stuff. Great see Cody and his wife in TNA. I'm glad they're in TNA. Good for uh, Brandy Rhodes. She wanted to leave WWE, wanted her release so she could be with Cody and support him. Cody's got a lot of things going on. The guy could be an actor. The guy could probably get in movies. He's going to be in a lot of episodes of Arrow. So good for Cody. Now the world title match. So Gal Kim. I had her. I predicted her winning. So now I am 4 for 2 on my predictions. World title. EC3 challenging Lashley for the TNA World title. This was no holds barred and it was pretty damn good. I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. It was pretty damn good. It was good. It was a good, intense matchup. Before it even started, before the bell even rang, EC3 gets speared and flies out of the ring after getting speared before the bell even rang. That was pretty awesome. Lastly, in EC3, they worked pretty damn well together. EC3 loses. This was shocking. This was surprising to me. EC3 loses. I thought he'd win for sure. I thought EC3, I thought it was a lock that he was going to win the world title at Bound for Glory. But they went the other direction. Now, my opinion, this is just... Uh, speculation this isn't even a rumor this is just speculation what something I came up with that for the reason why Lashley won and retained this is what I think I think that uh, possibly now nobody knows a third party helped TNA funded Bound for Glory and is funding the impact tapings. After the end of the year, I don't know if the third party is going to fund more TNA shows, more impact tapings. I have no clue. I don't know if um, Pop TV's deal, I don't know if it's two or three years. I have no clue. Anyways, I don't know if Pop TV's a uh, contract past one year so the third party is not Billy Corgan that's what I read that Billy Corgan did not fund and help and save TNA this time like he's done the last two or three or four times before they've had tapings or a pay-per-view Billy Corgan has saved them with his pocketbook and his checkbook 
So if it wasn't for Billy Corgan, Slammiversary would have never happened in 2016. So good for him. Thank you, Billy Corgan, for saving TNA. I hope you don't lose all your money on investing in TNA because they got a lot, a lot of debts that they owe other people and other companies. So it wasn't the other company that owns half of TNA. I believe their name is Aralex or something like that. And Dixie Carter owns the other part, along with Billy Corgan. So it was a third party. Or I don't even know if Dixie might not own hardly any ownership anymore. So they're calling it a third party that saved TNA. I don't know who it is, but I'm going to speculate why Lashley retained EC3 should have won. In my opinion, EC3 should be the man. He should be the guy. He should be the franchise of TNA Impact Wrestling. He should have won the world title. But maybe Vince. Maybe Vince McMahon bought it. Maybe he bought it from, I don't know. If he did buy it, why would he let Bound for Glory happen? Unless, here's my speculation. This is all just this speculation. It's just me coming up with a storyline, basically. Because that's what it, this could be turned into. Vince could have let Bound for Glory happen, but I don't know why he would. If he's not going to use any TNA talents, and if he's not going to make a storyline out of it, and have Impact Wrestling invade WWE TV, then why would you let Bound for Glory happen? Well, my opinion, Lashley might have retained, because Vince McMahon bought TNA. And Vince, I'm sure... Thinks Lashley has the look that he likes a jacked up bodybuilder. So Vince wanted Lashley to retain. That's possibly why he probably retained. But this speculation. Again, I don't really think this is true. I don't think Vince purchased any of TNA. I don't. I think his uh, ego won want Bound for Glory to happen if he did purchase it he, I doubt he'd want it to happen unless he wants to do an epic storyline where nobody knows and that Vince tries to hide it that he bought TNA because just imagine if guys like Lashley EC3 and some other guys just imagine if they popped up and showed up on Raw and invaded that'd be pretty awesome I'm not sure how many people would care WWE fans that don't watch anything else, they probably wouldn't even know who the TNA guys are. They wouldn't know, Le well, maybe they know Lashley, but they probably wouldn't know who EC3 is. They wouldn't know who Rockstar Spud is. They wouldn't know Broken Matt, Brother Nero. They wouldn't know Decay. The WWE fans that are just, and just only watch WWE, a lot of them are probably clueless, and in my opinion, you're not a real wrestling fan. If all you watch is WWE. And that's okay. If all you prefer is WWE. But if you're a real wrestling fan, you prefer to watch other companies like Ring of Honor, um, NXT. Some people watch NXT and don't watch any WWE. Um, Lucha Underground, NXT. TNA, Ring of Honor, New Japan Pro Wrestling, AAA in Mexico, CMLL. I was almost going to say All Japan Pro Wrestling, but I'm pretty sure they're out of business. I'm sure there's a lot of other companies in Japan other than New Japan, but New Japan is the biggest next to WWE in the world. New Japan is the most well-known in Japan and around the world. Along with WWE. So, I don't know. I just, I find it funny and odd and weird and cryptic that uh, Lashley would retain the world title. Now, I'm sure Vince isn't the owner, but if he is, that's why Lashley retained, in my opinion. 
because Vince would want him as a champion when he would invade Raw or SmackDown. And if Vince did buy it, I'm going to speculate in fantasy book here. If Vince did, he could have an epic story that could go over six months of TNA guys invading Raw and SmackDown. And it could be epic. I mean, the matches, some of them wouldn't be that good. But the, the guys I would like to see from TNA against WWE guys, Cody, Aaron Rex, Drew Galloway, EC3, Rockstar Spud, The Hardys, Decay. That's who I'd like to see in WWE if WWE and Vince bought TNA. I wouldn't care to see Lashley in WWE again, even as TNA champion, I don't really care for the guy. He's a good athlete, he's not a bad worker, but I'm not a fan of Lashley's. Again, EC3 should have retained, Lashley retains, does that mean Vince bought them? I don't know, I don't know. But... Who knows? Billy Corgan might know. He might have found out Vince bought them and he's going to let Bound for Glory happen. Billy Corgan wouldn't tell any of the fans. He wouldn't go on social media and tell anybody. Dixie claimed she had a big announcement yesterday, I believe, on Twitter. She She's always tweeting that she has a big announcement and then it's not a big announcement. It's like not a big announcement. The show rating I give it is a 8. Bound for Glory 2016 I give a 8 out of 10. I give it a 8. A lot of the crowd, during a lot of matches, the crowd was very weak. A lot of them were probably not wrestling fans. A lot of them got in for free because they went to Universal Studios, in my opinion. I'm sure all of them got in for free. Because I didn't think they, I don't think they sell tickets when they're in the impact zone. They need a crowd to show up. Some are probably wrestling fans from NXT. And then some don't know, have never seen wrestling in their life. And some wouldn't know a wrist lock from a wrist watch. So the crowd was pretty weak during some matches. Also the crowd was S-A-W-F-T. A lot of the pay-per-view. But whatever. It didn't really bother me. The only thing that bothered me was when they were chanting, pay, pay the light bill. That was ignorant. And that was stupid. My uh, ratings on Twitter. I gave it an 8 out of 10. I asked people to rate it on Twitter. 33% gave it a 9 rating. 33% gave it a 9. 28% gave it a 7, 16% gave it a 4, and 23% gave it a 2 rating. Bound for Glory was not a 2. If you voted for a 2, you're stupid. And if you voted for 2, that Bound for Glory was a 2, you're ignorant, and um, you're just a TNA hater. And you're probably not a TNA fan. This is probably the first time you watched a TNA show in years and years if you voted it was a 2. If you voted it was a 2, you're not a fan of TNA and you haven't watched Impact Wrestling the past couple months because back to back, week after week, for the last 2-3 months, Impact Wrestling on Pop has been damn good wrestling, damn good television, damn good episodes, week after week, since at least June or July. So, you're, just, you're a hater. If you voted to, you're a TNA hater, in my opinion. And you're an idiot. My uh, predictions, I went 4 for 2. 4 for 2, I went in my predictions, not that bad. 4 for 2. My predictions, go back, watch my Bound for Glory 2016 predictions in my TNA Impact on Pop playlist of Impact on Pop reviews and Slammiversary, play, Sam, Slammiversary predictions and review. And watch my Bound for Glory predictions and watch this Bound for Glory review. Hopefully you enjoyed it. 
Sorry I went like an hour. Almost went an hour. Sorry. You didn't have to watch more than 5-10 minutes. If you watched a minute, thank you. If you watched 20, 30, 40 minutes, thank you. I appreciate it. Follow me on Twitter at TNA WWE Guy. Also at NXT WWE Guy. Also subscribe to my YouTube. I really appreciate it. I don't just watch TNA and review TNA. I review Ring of Honor shows and pay-per-views. And I review NXT and WWE Raw and SmackDown and WWE pay-per-views. My opinion, Clash of Champions was... Uh, Clash of Champions was worse than Bound for Glory. The only thing at Clash of Champions I enjoyed was the Triple Threat Women's Title Match. Hope you enjoyed my Bound for Glory review. Bye for now.